Soon, guys, watch this video to the end because some <laughs> some seriously unexpected things happened. That I'm kind of impressed with. Um, I'm glad they happened, but yet I'm uh, kind of bothered that they happened at the same time because, uh, well, you'll just have to either watch it all the way through or skip to the end to find out. But here we go. It fell over in the transport process and has came apart, which is cool. Teaches me a few things. One indication right here. Well, you see it came off in two layers. So, I didn't realize I had, but I guess I packed it in two different layers. Three different layers, rather. You can see this black here. It tells me that heat was getting through here. So this crack's been here uh, for a little bit now, which inefficiently. So I've got to work on that. So how the heck am I gonna do this? There we go. Good as new from the thrift shop. We're gonna figure out how this aerator is gonna work. We're gonna hook it up and find out. Because we are going to try to make some calcium oxides. Reason for having the 90s. The 90 on this end was to create an air carrier, but now that I have this aerator in here, I want to see what's going to happen. Air, check. Fuel, check. Inefficient foundry, check. Clean crucible, check. No, no, no check, no check. So it's working. It seems to be mixing really, really well. Uh, decent cone there. It's not taking as much air though. Matter of fact, I've cut the air down because it was blowing it out. Strange. It took about an hour and a half to get to uh, last time. I have reached in about 15 to 20 minutes. So I think I got a harder flame. Maybe that aerator is working like it's supposed to. In about, I don't know, 30 minutes time, I'd say. Uh, this is all the, the borax residual borax oh Jesus I thought that was a wasp all the residual borax that was in there you see how hot it is uh, so in 30 minutes time I have gotten to where it took me about two hours and uh, two and a half three hours to get to the other day as you saw at the beginning of the video this founder is even less efficient as it was before this aerator is working awesome it is working great I have a huge dragon breath. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But when that comes out of the end of that uh, burner, man, it's just spreading all over the place. Wow, this is good. This is real good. All right, let's go in with the calcium carbonate. All right, so we're going to try to cook some lime. Now, in order to change this calcium carbonate, um, it's got to get hot enough. In order to do that, it's got to get up to about 1500 degrees, unless you're going to make a limelight, then you got to get it up to like 2400 degrees. But anyhow, I'm hoping that it's going to start glowing red. Once it starts glowing red, it should be done. Once it hits about that 1500 degree mark, or 812 degrees Celsius, uh, carbon dioxide starts getting driven off. And the oxygen remains, and you have two ingredients. You have calcium and oxygen, so you have calcium oxide. Uh, now, carbon dioxide in, in the carbonates uh, makes up for 56% of the mass of it. So, you can go ahead and say if you put, say, two pounds in there, you're only going to get a pound of car uh, calcium oxide out of it. Because the carbon dioxide, once it's gone, and it takes 56% of it, you only yield a 44% a of um, calcium oxide. Which is fine, this stuff's cheap. So, uh, with the new burner burning the way it is, or that aerator, that's not the new burner, but that aerator working the way it is, I think we'll be able to achieve that heat, and um, I think we'll have some calcium oxide here in a little while. I'm going to say an hour. I'm going to give it an hour. Everybody knows how a propane torch works. Uh, basically, propane comes out of the tube, comes up through here, it shoots a stream of propane up through here, but it draws oxygen or air. Uh, through these holes 
and mixes and then it creates a torch. So, in theory, if I were to hold this over the top of the foundry high enough to where the heat coming out wouldn't blow it out, if there's enough carbon dioxide coming out of that foundry, that flame should extinguish. And it's out. It just went out. This is working, guys, and it's going a lot quicker than what I thought. 28 minutes into cooking off this lime. Right, let me show you this. Okay. It looks like it's boiling. Falling, that's heat coming out of there, heated air coming out of there, maybe some gas, I'm not sure which. Let me tell you what we're going to do, we're going to let it sit there and cook for an hour, just to be on the safe side anyhow, and then we'll test some, and see what it comes out with. About 18 more minutes left, and I'm going to tell you what, this foundry, be as cracked up and junk as it is, I've never seen it this hot. I'm very impressed with this atomizer. Uh, or aerator, however you want to call it, but uh, very impressed with it. I can only imagine what it will do as a double burner in a properly insulated forge or foundry. So, kind of excited about it. As far as this stuff here, it's cooking. Um, oops. I damn near melted my uh, cast iron here. <laughs> Oh well. Wow. I already see a difference. This is the calcium carbonate. This is the stuff that I just pulled out of the bag. This is what we cooked off. As you can see, there's a difference in color already. Now usually, from what I understand, it's supposed to be really white and fluffy. It is fluffy, but it's not white. So, it's hot. I don't know that we got it hot enough. Let's check. See calcium carbonate has a reaction to water. Uh, let's see here. No, no reaction. Here we go. I don't think we have gotten it hot enough. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. It's reacting. Yeah, it's reacting. Oh, yeah. There's that. There's that temperature change. So, uh, I had to wrap it up. Um, we got thunderstorms rolling in. We, I've already got lightning and thunder over here. So, um, I washed off the calcium carbonate, um, you saw the difference in the colors. Now, my test for it is, if there's a, I think it's called like an exothermic reaction, I don't know what the actual name of it is, but anyhow, um, it heats up, it gets really hot. So, this is just lime and water. This is cooked off stuff, but when I mixed it, it was still kind of warm, so I couldn't tell if it was heating up or not. Well, you see the color difference. So this here, um, I just threw a bunch of water on it, tried to wash it off, and I, I mixed it together and put it in a lump, and I set it on the table, and I was trying to hurry up and get stuff put away and stuff like that, and I come over here and I grabbed it, man, and it almost burnt my hand. It was hot, so... We have calcium oxide to a level. I wish I would have cooked it for a little bit longer because I think that's what it needs. It's a darker color, and I think I know what happened. Um, I think iron oxide's actually transferred into it. So inside the crucible, I have scaling on the inside. First time I've had that. But I don't know how hot uh, cast iron has to get to do this. But it melted. So <laughs> I ran that other setup for um, 
three to four hours the other day. And this didn't happen. This happened with that one. That burner is burning super hot. That was on three to four PSI. Now, I was ran it for a couple hours the other day on 10 PSI. Well, 8 to 10 PSI. And it didn't do this. So, something about that aerator. Um, and I'm telling you, that crucible has gone. I'm going to have to get me, I'm going to have to order a crucible. But if you look at the thing, you see it started bellow, bellying out on the sides there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but, but, uh, wow, I, I am, I am highly impressed. Um, I've always said, man, if I ever get a chance to milk cast iron, I'm going to do it. So told you the other day I was shooting for the stars. Well, I might be going to hit them, but anyhow, back to this. Um, yeah, look at that. Isn't that awesome? That's a lot lighter than this here. This is the calcium carbonate cube. This is the calcium oxide cube, and this is a lump of calcium oxide. Still has a lot of moisture in it, but it's heating up like it's supposed to. Um, I don't think that the crucible would have lasted to cook it any longer. So I'm going to have to try to figure out something different. Um, I need a piece of stainless steel, and I don't have... I can't, it's hard to find. It's expensive, too. Let's see here. What size? I think my crucible is a three-inch crucible. No. It's a four-inch by seven, somewhere around there, with a piece of half-inch plate, because that's all I had to build to it on the bottom. But, you know, I tried this, I'll, and I don't know how. This is stainless steel, but um, it burned a hole in the bottom of it a while back. And, uh, yeah, that was a crucible failure. That's actually what happened there. So, I don't know, guys. So, that is a good degree of success right there. I done hit that with the torch and tested it out. Um, this stuff, you're supposed to let it cure for seven days, like any concrete or cement. So, I am happy with results. Um, stay tuned. We're going to be doing some more testing with this stuff once I figure out how to make some man because oh what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? <laughs>